Aloha and welcome to the second episode of Aloha Living TV, a video magazine from Hawaii Information Service. I'm Ryan Ozawa and as promised, we're going to cover drone photography and real estate. And for this episode, I wanted to go to the expert. So we are here on location at Drone Services Hawaii with uh, founder and general manager, Mike Elliott. Hey, Mike. Great to see you again oh, today, Ryan. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for making time with us today. Oh, always, always. So we'll get to what Mike does here at the end of the video, but let's get straight to the questions that I think many real estate professionals have about using drones for photography. Now, first of all, Mike, drones are so accessible now. A couple hundred bucks to a couple thousand bucks, you can get one, you can buy it at the local electronics store. So what stops me as a real estate agent from just buying a drone and sending it up and taking pictures of a property? So the big issue is the understanding of what is commercial use. Mm -hmm. A lot of people uh, think that I have to be directly paid by somebody uh, and that that's commercial use. But anything that's used pers pursuant to your business, if you use it internal to your business and you shot photos and you put on your website, that's commercial use. Mm. So even though you're not being paid directly for the photography that's being shot for the real estate, uh, it's commercial use because it's pursuant to your business and that's the way the FAA has looked at it. Ah, uh, so it's not a loophole if I was like, I'll buy you lunch if you take photos no. or videos. And that's that's also receiving payment. Mm -hmm. A case of beer, uh, <laughs> lunch, whatever it may be, that's still receiving compensation in some form or fashion. So where are the rules that regard uh, the controlled drone use coming from? Is it state? Is it county? Well, now all uh, drone use rules and regulations come from the FAA. They're mm. all codified in the uh, Federal Aviation Regulations in Part 107. There are a few rules that are just outside of that, but for the most part, all the drone rules and regulations are in the uh, Part 107 section of the uh, Federal Aviation Regulations. So if I wanted to engage a drone, either myself or with someone's help, like Drone Services Way, to take aerial photography of a property, um, what do I need? So. What someone's going to have to do if they want to uh, engage in that type of activity is they're going to have to get their Part 107 certificate. Uh, that is an uh, exam that it doesn't involve any flying. Uh, once you take this exam and you pass it, you'll be a certificate holder. It, it doesn't uh, measure your proficiency in flying your drone, but what it is is a bit of like having a driver's license or a pilot's license to some degree. Uh, to where you know what the rules are, you're responsible to follow them as a commercial operator. All right, so to use any uh, aerial drone photography in a real estate uh, area, it's commercial use, so you need someone with a Part 107 certificate. How do I find someone like that? Most definitely. Uh, you know, there's um, a lot of different individuals that are you know, here in Hawaii that have started their own websites. Uh, sometimes folks will cold call real estate agents hmm. and say, hey, uh, you know, I've I'm a licensed pilot. I live in this area. If you need any, you know, photography or video for a site, um, and people reach out to us quite frequently for doing different projects, anywhere from just a, a, you know, maybe a couple hundred dollars, and we've done some real estate projects that are a couple thousand dollars. Wow. All right. So it just depends what somebody uh, wants or needs. But there are quite a few people here in the state of Hawaii that are licensed, do follow the rules, insured, mm. and uh, yeah, ready to go. And you teach a class in Part 107 certification. We do. I mean, one of the things that we've been uh, adamant about since the very beginning is that to survive in this industry we have to obviously follow the rules and regulations that are put forth, but we also want to help other individuals follow that same path. If there are a large number of people that do that, then you become a force to be reckoned with when it comes to impacting your livelihood when there's hundreds or thousands of people that do this and actually count on this as part of their income. And they treat it professionally, they act exactly. professionally, they're not making a black eye for the industry. Exactly. And we've seen a big change in the past few years where you don't see as many um, people that are flying illegally uh, or violating airspace and things like that. Even though there are more drones, we're seeing fewer and fewer uh, incursions into airspace mm -hmm. or illegal flying for commercial purposes. So if I were a realtor and I'm, I found somebody or someone cold called me, how do I know that they have a Part 107 certification? Uh, actually, you can verify it online. There's, uh, you know, the FAA. You can take get their certificate number. They could send you a photocopy of that certificate number. Uh, you can punch it in, look it up, and see if they're current. If they're not current, it drops out of the system. Mm -hmm. If they are current, then it'll just have their name and information right there and stuff. So you could actually verify that. Sure. If and I took the test and I got my certif certificate, how long does that last? 
So it's good for two years, and then you have a uh, recurrent test that is required every two years. Currently, that's the process, every two years uh, henceforth. All right, so you look for someone with a Part 107 license. You can verify it online with the Airman Check uh, website, and we'll have the link for that. Um, and if it's real estate, it's commercial use, so there's no getting around no. that. Now, if I were starting to play with a drone, I mean, anybody for hobbyist purposes can fly a drone. Oh, I don't, yeah. Can you give me the top three things that you wish people knew to be a good drone operator, to be a safe drone operator? Uh, read the instructions. Mm -hmm. uh, there are <laughs> I mean, that right off the bat. Uh, a lot of times people will quickly break something open, charge up the battery, and try to get it up in the sky, but they don't even know how all the functions and features work. And we get a lot of those types of phone calls. And there's a lot of damage that occurs from flight like that sometimes. Mm -hmm. So there are videos that are made by a number of manufacturers. They've kind of gotten away from printing up lengthy brochures and stuff. A lot of times it's better sometimes to go to the uh, support videos that they have mm -hmm. from unboxing to calibration to first flight so that you can walk yourself through that and then go right along with your product before you go fly. Read the manual. I mean, that's not an exciting yeah. piece of instruction, but so an number important one, one. I mean, that's one. And then uh, airspace. The uh, biggest thing when we do a job and we talk to somebody is location, location, location. Not much different than real estate. Yeah. But for the, the other reasons as to can I or can I not fly there? And so understanding uh, there's some different apps that are available for individuals so they understand where they are and if that requires some type of airspace authorization or they cannot fly in sure. certain locations. Like if you had a property by the airport, you're probably going to have some right. challenges. Yeah. All right. Kapolei is a, a big one. People, a lot of people live out that way, mm -hmm. out of side, and they don't realize that they can't fly in that area. Um, but they ask why, and it's they think Honolulu, but there's also sure. John Rogers Other Field airports. and Kalilo <laughs> Field that's out there too. Got it. So thank you very much for your time, Mike. Before we let you go, um, can you, for those who aren't familiar with your expertise, not just locally but nationally, um, what do you do here at Drone Services Way? So for about the past five years, we've basically been trying to um, establish ourselves. I think we, we have now. It's a pretty much a 360 business with uh, sales, repairs, uh, training, and then commercial services. The commercial services side is something that has really uh, expanded quite a bit for us in the past couple of years. And we really enjoy the challenges that come with um, a project and then matching up platform and capability mm. to give a client really what they're looking for. And you're statewide too. In fact, you're going to be on Kauai soon. Yeah, so we're heading over there tomorrow for a couple of days, uh, doing a number of maps, trying to uh, help with state project for some of the uh, flood damage from mm. last year and, and then mitigation measures that they can uh, employ for that. Had another state individual in here yesterday asking those same types of questions for here on Oahu. How can I use drones to help me check out all these different areas that I am responsible for? And so they're really looking at this more, like I said, as a tool uh, for their job. And that's what we, we talk to people. Mm -hmm. as. These things are tools. Um, the drone's a pickup truck. You put some you know, sensors on it, and then you have software that makes this uh, you know, a powerful tool uh, for an individual. Yeah, and like you said, you're a 360 business. So you've got it all covered. Well, thank you very much for your time, Mike. Anytime. All right. Take care. And thank you for watching Aloha Living TV. Uh, as always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure you don't miss anything. And uh, if you have a hot topic that you'd like covered, we'd love to go out and find the right people who can answer your questions. So just send us an email to support at highinfo.com. But until then, uh, thank you for watching. Aloha. Aloha.